Welcome to uh, this version of our podcast, What's the Score? Let me remind you that if you enjoy today's podcast, or any of our podcasts for that matter, to please press the like button on whatever format you're listening to the podcast on. Also consider supporting us by uh, joining us on patreon.com and show your support for the program that way. There'll be details to follow in the middle of the podcast. Once again, thanks for listening and enjoy today's terrific interview as well as some amazing film music. Today's program made possible by patrons like you. Welcome to where we celebrate music from the movies. From the golden age to present day, we've got it all covered. We talk to those in the entertainment industry and find out about their favorite scores. You found the podcast, What's the Score? I'm your host, Frank R. Wilson. So sit back, relax, grab a popcorn, and let's see what we'll be hearing today. Recognize that music? It's a favorite of our guest today. Now, he's a composer who likes to use unique instruments to create his scores. His works can be found in projects showing on Apple TV, Netflix, Hulu, and many more. His most recent work is for the recently released adventure series called Jane, which is based on the adventures of Jane Goodall, uh, and it can be seen right now on Apple TV. So I hope you'll all please join me in welcoming Kyle Rodriguez to the program. Hi, Kyle. Howdy, Frank. Thanks for having me. No, oh, my pleasure. I'm excited about uh, having a chat with you today because uh, looking at your picture, it strikes me as that you're a young man that's just kind of starting out. And, <laughs> and uh, a lot of times I talk to a lot of these old farts, if you will. So it's kind of nice to talk, talk to someone who's brand new and, and just getting started in the industry. So that's great. Brand new man, young whippersnapper. There you go. Kinda, you know, there you go. Green. Um, it's typical of, of our uh, program. We always like to start off with uh, trying to find out a little bit more about the person behind the baton, I guess, if you will. <laughs> I, I'd be curious if you could tell us a little bit about yourself. And I, I mean, you know, forget the music part of it, if you would, for a moment. But just tell us a little bit about yourself growing up and family and, you know, hobbies. You know, where have you lived and you know, all those sorts of things. We'd, we'd like to hear about about you, the person, I guess, if you will. No, absolutely. I don't, I don't think I've ever held a baton in my life. Well, uh, okay, baton, you know what I mean, so. though. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so uh, I was born in um, uh, Hartford, Connecticut, East Coaster. Um, I'm a Cuban, Puerto Rican. Uh, my parents are immigrants. Um, and I always grew up uh, loving music, but never really thought it would be you know really never imagined it to be a career i assumed i'd end up being uh, a a dentist or a, or a lawyer or something like that which you know that's that's a lot that's a lot of grad school to assume Boy, no uh <laughs> so uh but yeah i always i i grew up playing music i played the guitar i you know i picked drums when I, they handed out that form in fourth grade and the, and they were like okay pick an instrument and uh, I remember I didn't see drums on there. So I was like, all right, I guess the flute's cool. And my mom took the form from me and was like, you know, percussion is 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 also a word for drums. I was like, oh, cool. OK, well, we'll do that then. Uh, but no, I, I, uh, I, I played guitar and, and, and drums growing up. And uh, um, honestly, like the funny story about picking up the, the guitar, which is when I actually started to, I, I think, take music a little bit more seriously was... Uh, I 
met this girl in eighth grade, and I remember she told me that uh, I had a big, huge crush on her, uh, and I thought she didn't know. Of course she did. And uh, she told me that she was like, oh, like, it'll never work. You know, I, I, I like guys that play the guitar. And uh, I was like, I was like, all right, <laughs> I went and I uh, I bought a guitar that like, I think I think a day and a half later uh, to my mom's chagrin. Uh, so I was playing ACDC and Led Zeppelin, uh, not within the week, but soon. You know, enough. let me interrupt you for a minute. It's interesting. People don't realize, well, I say people. I mean, a lot of people don't realize women rule the world. They really do. They rule my man. They ru- <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> well, listen, I'm trying, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of therapy. I'm really trying to, uh, trying to undo all those years. But I'm, I'm grateful for uh, the instrument, I think. I think that, that, is, that has been one helpful thing that, that I've been able to learn with. Oh, that's um, cool. So uh, Connecticut then, huh? Uh, oh yeah, uh, uh, siblings. Oh yeah, four siblings. We got two older brothers, two younger, uh, uh, one y- older sister, one younger sister. I was, I was, I was squarely the youngest for for most of my growing up. So I was, you know, uh, off on my own, doing my own thing while all my siblings were, you know, I think getting a lot of the attention. <laughs> uh, yeah. Would your Would your mom and dad do for uh, for a living? Oh man, my mom was a was a radio host uh, oh, wow. and a personal trainer. So in Connecticut, there's this uh, radio station called Kiss ninety five point seven. So every every uh, every afternoon during the week, she had a radio show where she would give workout tips. Uh, and my dad was just uh, you know just a business guy, just an entrepreneur, kind of like had his hand in a bunch of different pies around around Hartford. Uh huh. Oh, that's cool. That's neat. That's what. That's a that's a neat back uh, backstory, and and uh, yeah. kind of helps explain a little bit about where you're coming from. So that's good. <laughs> so um, we got the childhood out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so how do, how was it that you? Well, let's see. We'll we'll get into that in a little bit. I guess. Sure. Um, sure. What we're going to feature today, as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, Kyle has uh, written the score for a a, a new film called Jane that's uh, featured on Apple Plus TV. Um, we're going to feature a lot of cues from that score today. And uh, let's see, the first one I think we were going to do... Uh, forgive me, let's see here. This was going to be... I think we were going to play Shrink Time first. Sure. And uh, and I know you, uh, you, you're you very proud of the score, and so there, we want to <laughs> yeah. highlight it today. Kind of, tell us a little bit about why you wanted us to play this particular uh, cue today. Uh, I think Shrink Time is pretty interesting because it, it's it's the cue that got me the gig. It was the fr- it was the very first thing that I handed in uh, back in the demo phase. So don't, uh, don't and you know what? And, and bear with yeah. me. Don't talk too much about that because I want to ask you about that process later. Oh sure. And that and For that's sure. good to hear. That I mean I appreciate that, but I want to. That's something I want to explore here a little bit later on. But okay. so, all right, it helped help you get the gig. And uh, what 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 is it about the queue that you think is special or that you like about sharing it? Oh, I think I I, I spent so long on on sound design and and I I just think there's a lot of really interesting texture in there that 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 made it um, that I I think just got me over the over the line in terms of of you know it's not. It's 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 very much a hybrid score. I I really uh, tried to, uh, you know, go kind of scary with it. Okay, <laughs> and I think that was something they weren't expecting. Uh, it, yeah, I just I I just think it's got a lot of like weird synth textures and something that you wouldn't necessarily find in a kid show. And I think that's okay. You know, Excellent. I think that's hey, what I that, ended up landing. That, that, that's a great description. Well, let's have a listen for ourselves. Uh, Again, the cue is called Shrink Time. It's from the film Jane, and it's written by our guest today, Kyle Rodriguez.
So you mentioned um, that you started to get into music, you know, drums and percussion and yeah, yeah. guitar and whatnot. So I'm kind of, and, and then you mentioned some rock bands that you were kind of trying to emulate. So I'm kind of curious, why, why get into film music that seems kind of so different than that? Yeah, it was, you know, it, for, for me, I, I think I, I, I grew up, I, I think I came from, I came from a love of uh, movies first, if you know what I mean? Like I, I thought for years I wanted to, um, I wanted to be a director or a, you know, or a colorist or you know an editor or something like that i was always making movies with my friends and so like uh growing up uh i mean i hope this doesn't get me in trouble but i used to you know i you know when i was like 11 or something like that i would i would sit in my mom's uh like we had our our our, our little mac laptop and and i would uh you know for god forgive me pirate movies all day i would just like go on lists of like the top uh, alert 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 <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> 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 I would sit I would sit and I, I would just like look up the lists of like the best movies of all time and I'd sit and I'd download them and I'd just like be in this cubby upstairs like a like a troll uh in this dark room in my mom's house just like going through and watching as much as I can I could because I didn't have any friends uh <laughs> it's just like that that was what I used to take up the time so I so I loved film so much and but it was always playing music and never really thought to put those things together until uh, at the very end of my college career where I was studying economics, I took uh, a film scoring class with my hero, uh, this guy named Adam Schoenberg, who is uh, an incredible composer and who we, I was lucky enough to have a, as a professor in college. And uh, Wait, suddenly... What school out of curiosity? <laughs> Occidental College, small liberal arts school, Northeast LA. Okay, Oxy, okay. Go Tigers. Uh, <laughs> did, <laughs> did not study music, did not... Uh, you know, did not commit to it fully until until a bit later in my career. Um, and uh, I took this film scoring class and suddenly like the entire time that I was doing that, I was, you know, I was taking, uh, you know, editing courses and, and I, I won this uh, film festival for a short film that I made um, about uh, studying abroad. Like it was it was like so, so like weird and, and random. But I, I had this go I studied in in Argentina for a few months in college and took along this GoPro and, and made this film essentially about being depressed and like, uh, and like, and, and, and like, and how, and how like, you know, when you're abroad, you take all your problems with you essentially. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I made this, so I was like making movies and, and that was kind of what I thought I wanted to do. And the entire time I'm doing that, I'm, I'm making electronic music, I'm DJing on campus, I'm playing the guitar and, I took this film scoring class and suddenly it was like, oh my God, it's like, I, I just had this moment where uh, I was like, this is actually the perfect synthesis, if you will, of, of, of all the things that I wanted to do. I was pretty techie. It was pretty computery. I was always taking apart my computer and installing parts and which, you know, not a lot of folks were doing back then. <laughs> uh, and it, it was like, oh my God, here, it, and my instincts were pretty good because of all those years of just like sitting and and watching a lot so I, I loved movies first and then was a musician second and I think that was such like a huge uh I, I for me I think it was it was a huge bonus that you know I, I came with with the instincts about how to make be, to be a filmmaker first before uh approaching film music rather than having all of these you know skills in terms of composing and and, and conducting and I, I, I like I didn't even know how to read music when I left college, which was oh wow, you know, which was its own challenge. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah wow, man. but that that's a great story though. Yeah, that it, thank you. Yeah, you, yeah I'm, I'm I won't go into it, but I mean I kind of understand that where I had a an epiphany at one point in my career. It was like oh wow, now I know what I'm supposed to do with my life. I know. And it oh, sounds my to God. me that's what that's what you had. Oh, absolutely. It was, I mean, I think for the first time it was like, oh, this is purpose. It's like, this is what this feels like. And I was all in my head about it. I was like, all right, well, I got to tell my parents, like I just studied economics and they had such a breath of, they were so relieved about that. And now <laughs> this guy's going to go study music. And, and I just remember uh, playing my dad this cue, uh, which I really wish I still had, but I, I, I played him this cue that I made, which I'm sure now would be like, wow, what is that? But I remember being like, wow, this is it. And I showed my dad and I was like, I think I want to do this. And he was like, all right, whatever. Listen, you're, you're 21. Like you do, do he was, I was, I just remember being so amazed by the support I got from my family as if like, you know, as if I was going to, 
you know, as if I was trying to 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 join the NFL. You know, I'm, I'm five seven. That's not happening anytime soon. Uh, film scoring, on the other hand, <laughs> a little bit more of a shot there. Oh, what a great, what a great story! And and, yeah. and 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 I can relate to it. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, man. Um, kind of going back to the uh, going back to the film and the score you can uh, composed. Yeah. Now, all right. Now, I'm going to ask for your help on this one. Let me think. The next few we wanted to play. Uh, let's see. A cert. A Ceredon Ju- Jubatis? <laughs> a Ceredon Jubatis, yeah. Okay, right. tell us a little bit about that cue and uh, why you wanted to play that one for our guest today. Sure, sure. So that so that one is the uh so a Ceredon Jubatis is the is the scientific name for um for bats. Uh huh, and, it, okay. and and so every episode of the series is about uh an endangered species. So uh, uh episode 6 is is about um this bat that uh lives in the Amazon. And the episode starts with this skydiving sequence where uh, um, Jane, our lovely protagonist, uh, like jumps out of a plane and like lands in the rainforest. Uh, and I-, I love this cue. It's one of my favorite cues in the show because I really got to go all out in terms of, you know, it's 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 synths. It's like it's like EDM. It's kicks. It's eight oh eights. But it's also uh, you know big orchestral horns and strings and it's like it's it's so melodic and and i remember you know it's just something that you know, um you know a few years ago i would have been blown away that i was able to pump something like this out so <laughs> <laughs> well that's great well, let's uh, let's have a listen to ourselves yeah, please now, again this is from a cue from uh, from the film jane and it was written by our guest kyle rodriguez
One of the things I mentioned in the uh, introduction, because you were kind enough to share with me a little bit of your biography, it talks about the fact that you, you like to use, for lack of a better term, it says unique instruments. And so I'm just kind of curious, totally. what are some of the unique instruments that you've used in some of your work? Oh, it, it, it runs the gamut. So I've got this... Um, I mean, it's something that I learned from uh, my, my first job in 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 town, uh, which I was very lucky enough to grab. Was um, I were I was an assistant for this composer Nathan Barr, who I owe everything to. Um, and Nate is one the I think one of the probably the biggest thing that I learned working for him over the years was that you know there there's something so important about playing things yourself and and giving your scores you know something unique and something that's that lives in the real world and i think like i it just it just taught me the value of of recording and recording yourself and and you know inserting your musicianship into it so he's got all these like weird instruments from all over the world and that's that's kind of his thing um and so like over the years you know i've tried to put my spin on it by trying to make as many instruments as i can uh, at least, at least like a couple per project. So, for example, I was working on this um, found footage horror movie a few years ago, uh, and um, I was looking for kind of like a they they wanted the score when I was talking to the directors who are uh, who are friends of mine that I grew up with and went to high school with, and they they've gone on to they're making incredible films now, and I'm you know so mm. so blessed to have them in my life. They're called Simple Town. If anybody's wondering. Uh, and they were making this horror movie and they wanted it to not sound like music. They wanted it to sound like, they wanted the music to almost sound, um, like machinery and, and, and like natural sounds in the world. So, uh, I found this, uh, wall ornament from, um, Ross, uh, dress for less. It's this like hideous thing that I'm sure, you know, you would find in a, uh, in the bathroom in an Airbnb. And it's, it's just like, a, like basically like a met a metal, uh, it's it's ba- it basically like a, me- a a dome with a bunch of metal spikes hanging off of it, and it was exactly what I was looking for for a long time. So I took that, uh, I soldered on a few contact microphones all over it, uh, and and while I was writing the score, I would basically watch the cut, and I would take a bow or a hammer or like a screwdriver or a wrench, and I would just be like hitting this thing while it's while it's lined into my interface, and then like take that, and basically it 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 it, it almost sounds like uh like a ship sinking like it, it it sounds like it sounds like um underwater uh it sounds like machinery sinking underwater into the sea it's really like something special especially after i've had my hands in like processing it so uh no that like that's something that i love i, I have this play school tape recorder that I, I i got from goodwill that it's you know it's one of those colorful things that we used to play with in daycare and I lopped, so it's got these two microphones hanging off the side of it. So I lopped off one of the microphones on the side, attached a line in, uh, and, 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 and circuit bent it in a couple places where essentially I can record into it, record onto the tape, and then record it back out on, record it back out into my interface. So I'll take, so I'll take things like the, uh, like the wall ornament and I'll re- record it onto the tape. And it's such a roundabout, like if you listen to it, you would be like, oh, okay, well, you know, there are a lot of ways to do that that are a lot easier. But <laughs> for me, for me, it just brings like that little bit of extra like fun element where like I, I just get to, to, to play around in my room, you know, granted I have time to do it. Um, and it's, it, 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 it really brings this kind of analog weird, uh, you know, uh, part of my French shitty sound that I think <laughs> that I, you know, that I, I, to me, like from all my work with Nate, I was like, okay, that's me. Like that sounds human, you know? Did, did you ever see, um, goodness, it was, a, it was a documentary. I, I believe the name of it very simply was score. And it was all about film scoring and those sorts of oh, things. Oh, yeah. Maybe, oh, yeah. I love those Because I can remember there were a couple of guys that were in there that were featured that tried to make all these unique sounds in, in ways, you know, you wouldn't even, or at least I wouldn't have dreamed of. But, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was really interesting. And I get, yeah, yeah. was that an inspiration for you? Or or, or was this I, just something you did on your own? You said, you know, I, I want to create some kind of my own sounds. Honestly, it was it was it, it honestly was something I did on my own. It was really like I I was just so interested in in synths. I think early on in my career, and I, and I went from just like you know normal you know eighty synths, which you know I've got a ton of those. But it's it, it was more like okay, how do I go beyond that and get a little bit more creative with it? And I and I started. There's this whole circuit bending community online, which is you know you can go on Etsy and type in circuit bent and all of these like weird. 
uh, creators will come up of people who are, you know, finding things like in toy stores and essentially like you, essentially you, you break open a toy and then you, you have a soldering iron and wires and you're essentially just like taking a wire, putting it against something. And hopefully if you know enough not to break the thing, you're, you're, you're placing the contact against different parts of the circuit and hoping that something interesting comes out. And I was like so interested in that community. So I started Holy to just see an experiment on my own and see like what I could come up with. And, and like these were the things. Wow. That's wild. That's wild. <laughs> let's, um, let's go back to uh, your, the score that you composed for Jane. Sure, sure. Uh, the, the next coup you wanted to talk about uh, was one of the ones that I listened to when you sent them to me. This is... Uh, yeah called the jubilee theme suite yeah which yeah. i'm assuming i guess maybe has samples of, of music from the whole series i don't know you can tell me but I, I really enjoyed it so tell me a little bit about why you want to include that today yeah so absolutely so i i i think that's interesting because i i think uh once i've um once i actually got the job i remember the uh showrunner was like okay the very first thing we want from you is like a five minute suite uh which for me i'd never written a suite in my life so i was like okay like let's you know let's try it he wanted he wanted just like a five minute piece of music where uh that included themes and had colors from the show and and, and thankfully like i I'd, I'd tell you what, let me let me let me let me stop you for a moment yeah, go because ahead. i'm gonna Please. go ahead to a this was what i kept waiting to ask you later but it, since it's coming up now it, it makes sense yeah yeah um it obviously happened on this project and i'm assuming maybe maybe it happens in others now I'm curious because I I also kind of at least I'm attempting to be an actor and well, I am an actor but you <laughs> know but I, I do a lot of auditions and those and submissions and things like that. Sure. Does that work the same way for you guys that you have to audition to uh, at, at least at this stage in your career for for a gig and because it oh, sounds yeah. to me like you do based on what you're telling me. Oh, big time! Yeah. Well, it, it, it's kind of it, it really is. I mean, I, I think every composer will tell you will tell you something different about how you get the job, but I think. Um, I was lucky enough to know this man, uh, Frank Garcia, who's the music supervisor on the show. Uh, well, I guess he's kind of like the head of music over there, uh, for the family division at Apple. And he is a wonderful, beautiful man. And everyone should, everyone should look him up. He's amazing. Um, so Frank, um, I remember he was working at DreamWorks for a while. He was on DreamWorks animation, which is how I heard about him. And he did this panel, uh, you know, I think this was in twenty tw late twenty twenty or early twenty twenty one, where he was he went he was back at DreamWorks and he was on this panel and talking about the process of of hiring composers. And one thing that he talked about was that, which is you know a big problem when you're starting out, is that uh, in order to get the gigs, you need you need an agent, and in order to get an agent, you need to have gigs, and you know, and also and like and and another thing that I think people battle against is the, is you know the like when you're starting out you and you're you're up against a composer who's been doing it for you know for a few years they've got all sorts of relationships with these people that that you don't have so i i i understand why a lot of showrunners aren't picking up people fresh out fresh out the gate because you know you want to be able to trust that your people can do it you know it's because at, at the end of the day the show is your baby it's not about the music it's about everything like you have to you have to take a look at the whole scope and at the end of the day hollywood is about you know you just want to trust people and know that they're going to do a good job so um so i met frank and and i he did this panel and one of the things that he talked about on this panel was um that that something that i thought was amazing they did at dreamworks is that they so they get their submissions in they scrub all of the titles they scrub the credits and the names and who actually wrote the music and it's kind of a blind audition where i think like blind auditions have their own you know have their own reputation nowadays and 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 you know for orchestras and things like that i think uh uh i think people's experiences vary but for for in, in our world i think it was like such an important step forward in terms of like just getting more names out there because you're just listening to the music you're not going to their imdb while you're listening to their demo and going like oh my god they did this that's that's amazing uh so I read that on the panel or no, I listened to that. I listened to the panel afterwards and I reached out and I was just like, Hey, I think like I just sent, you know, some, some email where I was just like, I think that's amazing that you're doing that. Like my name's Kyle. Like, I think we know some of the same people. And, um, and we had like a little coffee on zoom. This was back to like when the pandemic was raging. Uh, and, um, so we had a little coffee on zoom and I think we hit it off and, and so, 
uh, he put me up for a couple things, a couple theme songs. And then eventually he had this show called Jane where he was like, Kyle, I think you might be perfect for this. And uh, I met with the showrunner, um, met with the music team, and then did this whole demo process, which was, which, which was our version of an audition, which is essentially right. they – you sit down with the showrunner, you watch – uh, they 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 pick out a couple scenes they want you to take a look at beforehand. Then you watch the scenes with the showrunner, have kind of a spotting session, meet each other, and then afterwards I went away for a couple weeks and worked on this thing and and put this thing together. And that that was uh, shrink time, which is the cue that you heard earlier. That was one of the cues that I put together for this audition. And then once I managed to lock down the gig, uh, I then the first thing they asked for was this was this was the theme suite from uh and and i knocked out of the park man i'm stoked i was <laughs> <laughs> i think i think it's good like i really i and I, and i do as well i think our listeners will enjoy well let's uh oh. let's have a listen for ourselves Thanks, again man. this is from the film jane it's called jubilee theme suite and it's once again written by our guest kyle rodriguez
We'll get back to our program in a minute. This program is done for the love of film and film music, plain and simple. However, it does take a huge investment in time and in fees for me to make the program work for you. And I don't sell commercial time and don't really want to on this program. Rather, I'm kind of like a, a public broadcasting station. I need support from listeners like you. For as little as $3 a month, you can help me uh, uh, offset the time spent in putting the program together. Or maybe you just think of it as leaving a tip in the tip jar. Either way, if you can join up, uh, there will be bonuses, like an additional 10 to 15 minute segment with our guest every week, where we'll play additional cues as well as ask uh, some extra questions. And it's going to be only available to patrons. How do you sign up? Well, it's simple. You go to patreon.com slash what's the score, and that's all one word. That's Patreon, that's P A T R E O N dot com slash what's the score. Check it out. We'd be grateful for your support. That's patreon.com. You know, in in listening to what you were saying, it it reminds me of uh, I don't know if you've ever seen any like films on this or documentaries, those sorts of things. It used to be in the day that a composer would meet with a director and play on the piano. Well, here's how this cue is going to sound, <laughs> and it was just a piano. And and the you know, the the famous one I always quote, and I'm sure my listeners are sick of me saying this is. John Williams sitting down with Steven oh, Spielberg yeah. and saying, "Here's my theme for the, for for Jaws." Dun 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 <laughs> dun dun, and he says, "What? That's it? <laughs> That's it? <laughs> well, t- trust me, it'll sound better with a full orchestra, you know." <laughs> uh, but these days, you don't have to do that, uh, which I find interesting. But but it leads me to my question because, and I didn't listen to everything that you sent me. I, I listened to a few of them. Thanks, Frank. Um, do you? Do you lose, use any live players, any live instruments, or is it all synth? Okay, so great, so great question. And you know, I think uh, I'm sub- I'm okay. Here's what I'm supposed to say. Uh, <laughs> here's what I'm supposed to say. Uh, no live players. Uh, you know, all of it's in the box, and 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 no live musicians on it. Man, of course there's live players on there. Absolutely, are you kidding? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hand in something that's just like <laughs> like completely in the box. Uh, I think there are all sorts of like, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, I think there's all sorts of there's a little bit of controversy in town about recording musicians and things like that. But let's just say I did it out of town. Um, I <laughs> I yeah. So so I a lot of the time, um, depending on the budget, I, I, I think like you're, obviously your budgets vary a ton nowadays. So you, you don't you don't always get to get in a room with 35 players. So a lot of the time, um, I mean, this this is a, a product of me. Um, working for someone for a long time and getting this experience, but I've gotten pretty good at mock-ups and gotten pretty good at uh, getting the orchestra in the box um, to sound pretty real. And and I, I think that gives you a certain unique set of skills. That's, 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 that's pretty different from what, what was required back in the day. So now I'll, I'll usually record it and I'll have myself on there. I'll, I'll I'll try to play as much as I can. So all the guitar is me. All the weird synths are me. You know, uh, a lot of the percussion, a lot of the shakers, and things like that. And then I'll have I'll bring in a couple players, whether a cellist or a harpist or you know someone who plays the guzhong or something like that. And I'll have them play on top. And I think for me that brings that that brings it close enough it just adds that layer of humanism and realism that i think is is pretty important to have when you're handing these kinds of things it is and i must say i i feel this is maybe controversial and i you know if you want to pass that's fine but i i feel for lots of different professions to be honest these days but certainly for musicians i feel for them because it's you know guess what pal you might be replaced by a computer and i just that's yeah, it sounds really great and it's realistic and everything, but mm-hmm. I, I, I worry sometimes we're going to miss that 
I don't know, maybe the emotive sense of what an instrumentalist can bring to it that a computer can't. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, I mean, to 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 musicians credit, I, I think that recorded orchestras aren't really going anywhere. I think the I think the work's gotten harder over the years. But in the same way that work for everybody has gotten harder and, and more competitive over the years, I think uh, for composers, you know, like there used to be five composers. Uh, and I'm sure those guys would have a lot to say about there being so much work. And and and, and I, I think in a sense, I, I, I think I just tend to lean a lot more optimistic in terms of where music is going. And I think like in, in a way it's democratized in a way uh, that um, I think you're getting to hear a lot more interesting stuff like on TV and in and, and, and movies than than you used to be able to and 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 i love a 40 piece orchestra there's i've i've been in those rooms there's there's nothing like it it is really magical and there's something about bringing people together and i don't think that's going anywhere i think i think like the composers that are doing well really understand the value of getting people in a room so i think like when there's budgets studios yeah and and, and i understand (laughs) i understand the reality that's true it um and it always amazes me. I mean, you've got some of the literally some of the finest musicians in the world. Oh yeah, that are in the L.A. area, and 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 I've had a couple of composers tell me, yeah, you know, we we pass the score out, and you know, I drop the baton, and boom, there we go. And oh I said, yeah, what, you don't like rehearsal? I, well, maybe once, you know, but then no, we got to go. Oh, you man. know, time is money, and it just really? amazes me how people can just sit down and read that sheet music and just make it make it work, you know. Oh yeah, no, they're they're incredible. I mean, I I've been in the room for I so I worked when I worked for that guy Nate. Uh, he opened this incredible scoring stage, and which is scoring stages are not opening up these days. They're just closing down for the most part. Uh, which which is which is its own shame, and it's there's like there's its own history that's kind of getting lost in there. But yeah. um, but I think to his credit, he really saw the vision of of you know in the value of recorded music these days. So uh, he had this like scoring stage, and it was I remember like one of the first days like we were opening up it's called Bandrika Studios and it's in um it's in the valley and i remember uh every thursday you know and this is like my first introduction to um to working in film like it, it was my first job in town uh again god bless love very lucky to have gotten that gig and every thursday i'd show up to a construction site with a hard hat and like every thursday morning at 8 a.m. Uh, we'd be walking around and like looking at the foundation and so we was building the studio so when it finally opened we had a scoring session for this movie uh house on house with a clock the house with a clock in its walls uh by uh with eli roth and i remember we were rushing 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 to get this like to get like there was literally wires hanging out of the wall we had um our our you know the wiring technician for the studio this woman nikki uh tefralian was 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 just i was I just remember late nights up with her soldering cables and putting together connectors, trying to get because the session was like in a week and it, and the studio was just going to be ready right on time for it. So uh, and I, I just remember my first session in town uh, was being in there. Uh, wow, like the orchestra's filing in and we're just putting the panels on the walls <laughs> trying to get the studio ready in time. And they came in and they sat down and they played uh, beautifully. And it was, it, it was, it, for, for me, it felt like a miracle. And it was like one of the things I remember uh, after the sessions, Nate was like, so like, yeah, you still want to do this? And I was like, dude, are you kidding? Like this was one of the best things that has ever happened to me in my entire oh, life. It was wow. such a rush. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, another cue from the film Jane that you wanted to play is uh, called Ancest- uh, Ancestral Tale, I believe. Yeah, yeah. That's Tell right. us a little bit about that cue and why you wanted to have that shared with our audience today. Yeah, so that so in the in the show it's 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 all live action and CGI mix, so it's so it's live action, and then uh, Apple has uh, and with with Sinking Ship, who's um, the production company, they have really uh, you know gone to bat for these incredibly realistic animals that are that are all over the series uh but in in the caribou episode there's one animated there's one animated sequence in the entire show uh which is where uh david uh um one of the protagonists he his grandfather is talking about the importance of 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 caribou to uh to indigenous people and and why it's important to take care of the land and and why caribou and 
um, are important for the land. And so there's this one animated sequence. And so we wanted to do something a little bit different with that. So it's, it's, it's a lot more straightforward orchestral, um, but with a lot of atmosphere like that, this is one of the cues that I used the, uh, the wall ornament on cause we wanted to, it a little oh, okay. bit to sound like it was from outer space and, and, uh, yeah, I just think it's, I just think it's a gorgeous piece of music. Oh, great. Well, let's have a listen for ourselves again. This is from the film Jane and it's called Ancestral Tale written by our guest, Kyle Rodriguez. I am curious about, because um, this program typically features, uh, and sometimes we'll feature music written by our guests, but a lot of times it features music written by other composers. And so I'm oh, just kind of really? curious, what are what are some other composers out there, whether they be living or dead, that you've admired or, you know, love their work? Oh, man, I love, uh, I love Desplat. He's a hero. Uh, uh, Grand Budapest Hotel changed my life. Uh Obviously, I think when I was starting out, Hans was, um, you know, an enormous influence on me, I think, just because he was a rock star. I, I, I remember going to San Francisco to see his live show. This is this is like before I had was even had a foot in the door. I I, I knew nothing about making film music. And uh, I, I was living in Oakland for a year to try to learn 
like I, I finished school, moved up to Oakland for a year because I knew I didn't have any of the hard skills to uh, get a job. <laughs> I, like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, I am probably one of the least competitive people in town. So I moved up to Oakland to, to by day I was working at a tech startup, and, uh, do, uh, making phone calls and doing doing outbound sales. And then by night I would go home and I would take a bite of a sandwich and then I'd go and work at a recording studio. Uh, and like an intern and scrub toilets and learn how to mic a drum set and things like that. And so, uh, so I remember Hans's tour came to San Francisco and I was like, oh, and it's so funny since then I've like met some people around who played at that show. And I was like, I was like, you know, I was there. It was like, it's, it's like so funny to think back on, but I remember going, going to see that concert and my sister getting me tickets for my birthday. Cause I was broke and, uh, and uh, I, I think that was really hugely influential on me. Obviously, like Elfman is incredible. I love him so much. Batman, again, yeah. uh, changed my life. John Powell. And I, th- I think like John Powell, I mean, his, his music obviously speaks for itself. He is incredible, but also just like such a beautiful human being. And I think like that's I think when you're outside of the industry, um, and I think this is, again, the optimist of, in me speaking, but I think like you hear a lot about, oh, you know, like there's all these people and everyone's like out to get you and, and, you know, everyone's like looking out for themselves. And then I think John, um, I, I met him briefly a couple times back when I was working at Nate's and, and I loved his music. And, you know, uh, one of the things that you hear is like the more beautiful their music, the more, um, uh, you know, the more unsure you could be about who they are and, <laughs> and, and, and him. And, and I've, I've just been surrounded by composers that have just continued to prove that wrong. And, and just been, I just know that this industry is full of like incredible people like John and, and, um, Sean Callery, who's also incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, oh man, who else? A ton, a ton. Uh, Matt Quayle, another, another nice guy. Yeah, it's just like it's just it's just fun to like I've kind of been influenced more by like I've obviously I've been influenced by people's music, but I think I've been influenced uh, a lot more by just seeing how people are and how they act and and just how generous and kind that, um, you know, industry people can be because I I think when you come from outside like me, it's it, it, it just seems really scary and like and like like it's it's a pretty uh you know vicious world and i think like if you meet the right people everyone's kind of amazing and you know the people who count and the people who are really doing it are all very very nice <laughs> you yeah, I, I, trust me i i, under, I understand that a few yeah. times i've been on sets you know film sets and stuff i trust me i understand there are come on let's face it there are some people that are only looking out for themselves oh yeah sure uh, but 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 they're, they're, the vast majority of folks are just. I, I love the culture and the atmosphere. Yeah. Of of being on a set, which of course is a little bit different than than what you're doing, because what you're doing, which is really kind of unique. I mean, mm-hmm. you're the you're you're at the very end. You're you know you're, <laughs> the thing. you're basically end. you're the last oh, yeah. person to touch this this baby of the director and the, and the showrunner, and it's like, okay, make this better, and it's you know that's a lot of pressure. And but 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 sure. you know people can be. Uh, generous and and loving and, and kind and those sorts of things, but that's yeah. uh, that's you know that's kind of unique because at least in other parts of the production, usually you know something can be fixed or we can change this or let's do another take or something like that. But I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. boy, you're at the end and it's like you know, make it work, pal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I yeah, I just think these days it's it's you know, I mean, I, I think I think. Hollywood has changed a lot uh, for the better, I, in 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 my humble opinion, and I, I I just think it's it's a lot harder to get away with being a prick right now than it ever has been, and I think that rocks. I think That's like good especially the, yeah the young people, everyone my age, like the folks that I'm working with who are um, even like a little bit younger, a couple years older, everyone's nice, everyone's lovely, like, everyone's just trying to work together to make this thing and have it come out and have it be good and do the best that they can. And I think that's like, that's what I think is one of my favorite parts about this job. It's like, it's amazing. It's amazing to write music, but it's even better to, to work with lovely people and just know that like you're on a team with everyone else and everyone's yeah. just trying to make this thing good. You know, the, the relationships are really what <clears throat> can make it very special. Absolutely. Of course, of course. Um, Another cue you wanted to uh, feature was is called Shark Feast, I think, or Fest Shark Fest. Shark from Fest. Jane. Yeah, tell yeah, me, yeah. tell me a little bit about that cue and uh, why that made the list today. 
Oh yeah, I, that made the list because I I, I think um, it's really uh, again another cue where I tried to use kind of weird sounds at the beginning. Again, you'll hear that that you'll hear that wall ornament just uh, clanking around because you're we're we're underwater. This is the episode about the great white shark, um, and I think like something that I something that I love that the series does is that it talks it it really humanizes. Uh, animals that you know you wouldn't necessarily want to get in the water with a great white shark but after watching the show you get it after watching the show you're like oh you know what like they're not really as scary as john williams is trying to make him be you know <laughs> it's like it's like john you got it all wrong man they're beautiful they're nice it should have been you know a little celeste up there uh uh yeah and i th- i i think at, at the towards the end of the queue you'll hear um i i like at the end of the show there's always this big um at the end of each episode there's always a big victory moment where you see the animal in its habitat and and i think jane talks about uh the importance of it of it of us conserving these creatures and and in this one i i tried to really reprise the um the theme suite which again the the, one of the very first things that i wrote for the show uh that i remember handing that in and being so nervous, which you're you're always nervous when people are seeing your your stuff for the first time, and I remember being so terrified and not really having any idea what these people were going to think, and I didn't get a single note from production, which is incredible. They were just like, "We love it." I've been listening to it while I write, wow. and I, and that that was such a such a huge feeling. So you hear that reprised in the end, and it's and it's yeah, it's beautiful. All right, well, let's have a listen for ourselves again from the film we've been talking about today called Jane. The cue is called Shark Fest. Written once again by our guest, Kyle Rodriguez. We've been kind of dancing around it, although I think people can kind of figure it out. But could you just kind of briefly let us know what what is this series about? I mean, I, I mean, I know what it's about, and, and but but sure. and, and people know 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 of Jane and that sort of thing. Can you give us a brief synopsis of uh, of what the the series is about? How many episodes and those sorts of things? Sure, absolutely. So the show is called Jane on Apple TV Plus. Uh, it's a ten episode series about. Um, loosely based on the the research and adventures of Jane Goodall, um, uh, who's an incredible conservationist, who I think everyone roughly has an idea of who this person is. If you yeah, don't yeah, look her up, yeah. she's incredible. Um, and, and every episode uh, is about an endangered species. So you have we'll have a great white shark, the polar bear, uh, caribou, bats, um, and and it really goes through. And every episode it talks about, it basically goes through and talks about the importance of these creatures and, and, and why we need to be paying attention to them and how few there are left in the wild and then what's hurting them and then what we can do on an everyday basis that will, you know, ensure the survival or at least give them a much better shot of, of doing so. So okay. I think it's, it's okay. and it's, and it's fun. It's just like, it's, it's just, it just doesn't feel like a show that's 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 trying to talk at you and i i i just think it's it's a really important uh show to come out right now especially for kids and uh yeah i think it's amazing oh that sounds like it was a special project to be a part of so uh, i'm kind of curious you uh 
Do you have anything in the pipeline that you can can mention for us right now? Or? <laughs> sure, sure. So I've got uh, uh, another show coming out, which is a, the, a very, very different kind of program. Um, this is docu series coming out in Paramount Plus about uh, the Stallone family. That that I that was happening at the exact same time as this show. Uh, surprise! If anybody from the show is listening, I was doing too. Uh, <laughs> I was double dipping, uh, and uh, I, I think that show is is almost a complete opposite. So there's no strings in sight, and that was a very conscious choice that we made. I made with the music team over there. It's 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 a lot of beats. It's a lot of production. So I came from. Uh, but again, before I was I was doing film scoring, I was making records and I was, you know, again, DJing, making electronic music with friends and I was in bands and things like that. And and um, uh, this shows a lot more of my, I think, production chops. So it's beats and drums and and guitars and it's 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 funky. I think we wanted to take uh, a kind of left field approach to you know we usually with these kind of shows they don't usually have a composer uh they usually take music from you know the library from the from the universal music library and that stuff is you know that stuff is all right that stuff is its own but uh they really wanted to go a different direction and and really hit the emotions uh and and i i think do it right so uh i've got that coming out may 17th it's called the family stallone comes out on uh comes out on, on paramount plus and I've got another project that I actually don't think I'm allowed to talk about yet that I just okay. got this well, week, fair enough. which is very exciting. So, <laughs> so if, uh, if people want to kind of keep in touch or follow along with what you're doing, I'm, I'm assuming you have a social media presence? Yeah, yeah. Follow me on Instagram. It's Kyle Rodriguez, K-Y-L-E-R-O-D-R-I-G-U-E-Z dot music. Honestly, that's the best way to hang out. I think that's that's where you're going to catch most of my stuff. Yeah, and that way they'll know what you got going on. Oh, okay. yeah. Hey, Kyle, look, I've... Gosh, I've really enjoyed this. It's a you're a delight to talk to, and I think your music is fresh and innovative. And it was really fun, kind of talking about this and focusing on this one film, which I think is, or I, I'm sorry, series that uh, obviously is very interesting and, and should be a, a very powerful experience to, yeah. for people to watch. And this will be on Apple TV. Uh, I, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. I have, Frank. It's such a pleasure. It's so fun. I hope you can meet in person sometime. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I, you know, if I ever make it out to LA, I've got several people I hope to run into. And meet, so, <laughs> oh yeah. And you'll certainly be on the list as well. Oh, so anyway, that, my uh, my thanks to Kyle for joining us today. My thanks to all of you for listening. If you uh, like the program, I encourage you to please click the like button wherever you happen to be listening in on the uh, podcast and leave a comment if you're so kind. And a special thank you to our patrons who uh, also help support the program. And my thanks to all of you for that. Uh, and I guess with that, there's only one thing left to say, and that's simply this, that my name is Frank R. Wilson. My time's up. I thank you for yours. Thanks for listening to What's the Score? What's the Score?